It was wonderful, it was ma magic time. Um, it, all, it all started basically from a thing called the Magnificent Six and a Half, um, which was uh, like, um, I think, a, a takeoff of uh, Magnificent Seven, of course. And I remember I was just booked for one day uh, where I had to be thrown into some cement. Um, and I said to the director, Harry Booth, who went on to do lovely things, of course, uh, I said, um, you've got rid of me. I've only done one day and you've got rid of me. He said, well, that's it. That's it. all the scene is. And I said, yeah, but just a minute. I said, I think I could stay longer and I could go right through this picture. Why don't we do it so that every time this big fella comes along, he throws me into the cement pit until right at the end, I go, just a minute, hang on. And I throw myself in. So I got myself a week's work as opposed to a day. And he said to me, we're doing a thing called the Double Deckers. I said, oh yeah, that sounds fun. He said, would you like to be involved? I said, well, he said, I don't know what it is. Well, I finished up as Albert the Dustman. Um, I co-wrote the title song, Get On Board. Pinched a couple of lines from Charlie Chester for that, which was, ring that bell, ding, ding, to the horn, honk, honk. That was from a Stand Easy, a radio show. I pinched that from. Then I was dialogue director, which meant basically I taught the kids slapstick, throwing custom pies in their faces and everything. And um, I wrote some of the episodes, the funniest ones, of course. Well, as far as sort of the slapstick's concerned, um, in every episode we either had a slapstick uh, thing, custard pie thing, or a musical number, or an, what we call an undercrank. In those days, everything, you know, the Benny Hill going fast and fast. Well, I say Benny Hill, it goes way back. Um, so um, it was my job basically to say, right, all stand up in a line, I'm going to practice this, and bang, in your face with a custard pie. And what you do is you take it very slowly, and you see, uh, you make a meal out of it. Um, and they were wonderful to work with. Um, I mean, they really were, they were a great bunch. Um, we should have done more. We should have done a lot more. Uh, because th th there's an art in slapstick. I mean, to watch someone like, say, Buster Keaton stand and watch a building fall over him, he's just standing there. I mean, that has to be worked out to the nth degree. Um, so, I mean, I, I did one silent thing years and years and years ago, but um, so silent nobody heard about it. It was amazing actually working with those kids. Um, I mean, for example, I was fascinated. I mean, Debbie, I mean, playing Billy. She sang one song, which was um, one particular song I remember, which was Granny's Rocking Chair. And she sat, this little girl, she was, I thought she was about 13 or 14, probably about 27 with kids. Um, she sat in this rocking chair and just sang this number, Granny's Rocking Chair, Granny's Rocking, much better she did it. It'll take you anywhere. And it sort of took her all over the place. Um, and then all the kids did numbers. And every week they finished with, see you next week. Not much like Al Jolson at all. Sorry. Mm -hmm.